fully yoked of a man, especially a man who has God, sometimes it is overboard. The fact that we know God, we might think that we are better than other people. The fact that we know God, we might think that the man that is good for us is the one who pray in tongues. We might think is the one who wears suit. And that's why we are marrying goats. Because we judge too much. Because the same God, how come we give and form marriages with people that both were not yet born again and they were equally yoked and both were people of the world? They didn't even have Jesus yet. If he can give them equally yoked, why would he disappoint people who go to church? He wouldn't. He would even favor them and they even have a greater advantage. But the problem is that a lot of us in church, we've taken the grace of God. Sometimes, let me tell you, the devil is alive. Even me, I've been there. That's why we have to rebuke ourselves. Where you start playing Holy Spirit, where you start, yeah? Come on now. So may we realize that it is God who forms marriages. And you know the wisdom of God surpasses woman's understanding. He go give a woman to carry big ministry with a man who does not pray every day like the way Christians will say it. But one thing that people will never understand, that same man has got a seed of Jesus in him. That is the one that gave the woman the Bible. So the same one that made it, and the man trusted in God because he gave the, he was in, a, he's in, in the world. He, he's in, he believes in God, but he doesn't have the, the way Christians of Africa, they call it. It's about a personal relationship, and that's what matters. Because what people see on the outside and with their eye is more than what God sees. So the man is the one who gave me the Bible. When I met him, me, I was in the world. My, my mother used to be prayerful. But when I met Papa Rokafera, I didn't know God. I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't start saving God then. I refused my calling my whole life, running away from it any way that I can run away from it. When I met Papa Rokafera, Papa Rokafera gave me two Bibles. So Papa Rokafera did not give me himself. He gave me God, the word of God. And I found out, oh, this man had received God a couple of years ago. Before he met me, God made him meet a woman which I will always be grateful to, Jennifer Williams. He met Jennifer. Je Jennifer Phillips or Williams, which of the two names? He met Jennifer. Jennifer was a prayerful woman. Through her and her father, my husband got to know about God. He bought, Jennifer bought Papa Rokafira his first Bible. Papa Rokafira gave his life to God. Jennifer and Papa Rokafira did not end up together. But Papa Rokafira was being made equally yoked for me. And God uses people in mysterious ways. Even the eggs that we might not even like some of us. Papa Rokafira gave his life to God. And God told him to buy a house, not to rent, because he knew now he's going to give him three sons, and he cannot live on rent. So Papa Rukafira bought a house. Papa Rukafira was invited to Zambia with his friend, a Yost, to come and teach a workshop of music, Zambian musicians with the Sakala brothers. And I happened to be one of those musicians that showed up in that room. And I looked at Papa Rukafira, and out of my own mouth, me, I didn't know anything. I told this husband before he married me, I, I was bored. I looked at him. I said, where you come from? I told him, oh, I've been there in Holland. I've toured there with the daughters of Africa. I said, oh, this and that. And he knew who my coach was, the Zambian, the, the Dutch woman that lives here. Oh, we talked. Rah, 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 rah. But I told Papa Rokafera, in the first time that I saw him, the first day, I said, are you married? He said, no. I said, are you gay or you're straight? He said, I'm straight. I said, I asked not to be rude because in your country it's allowed. And I look at him and I said, you're going to be my husband. You will marry me. He looked at me and said, sure. I said, yes, you'll marry me. He said, okay. And three months later on, I was here. Five, six months later after that, I was married. So it is God who prepares. And some people, we don't know where their lives is going. Right now, they might be in the world. They might still be living in the standard of what we call sin to you. Want to be judging them. But you don't know what God has called them. So if you look at that equally yoked. When I call Miss Goodman for your nonsense. For your nonsensity. Ooh. And equally yoked. He doesn't trouble you. He supports you. I thank God for this man. Because this man does not mind to sit 
behind me or besides me or just chill out and allow me to do things in my life. But I'm always moving with him. And we are together and we are one. You want equally yoked. Go and cry to God. And that's why they say the power of life and death is in the tongue. For real. Because me, I was, I was not even knowing what I'm talking about. I told him, you marry me. He looked at me. And Papa Rokafira could not take his eye off me. Let me tell you, sometimes I tell him, I said, baby, <laughs> you wouldn't mind if you just become like... <laughs> if you would stalk me the way you were making me feel when I met you. He was just looking at me with his angelic eye. I'm a man. He had a beautiful eye. I did die. I didn't lose myself in the eye. And then I wake up. I faint again. And then I look at him. And say, oh, that's why when you see my eye like this, is because I'll be zooming in. I'll be looking at my man. We were zooming in. That's why I gave birth to children who would look very much like him. And I'll be zooming. Sister, you cannot zoom in like this. You zoom in. Open your eye. The Lord said, open your eye. Just open my eye. Open like that. My sister's. He was shaking. When I greet him, I just feel his hands shaking. And you are the gift this man fever. Oh. No woman never make him feel this kind of waga. And if, if he would have looked at me like, oh, she didn't give her life to God, he would have left me. But he loved me and liked me the way I was. And he saw from Zambia that if, if he's going to choose me, he needs to know that he will not be around women. He's going to be, a, a, I'm going to be around a lot of men and he has to be a man who is comfortable with that because when you see me and my husband is seated there and I meet somebody and the gist, the, 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 the connection is so sweet, man or woman. If you see me the way I hold hand, the way I they hug, maybe that's why they, the wives, that's why with the brothers, I always first ask the Holy Spirit to show me because if the wife, she, they carry pepe, ignorant spirit. I don't want to get in trouble and I don't want to put my brothers in trouble. But me, my husband know it too. He trusts me that I'm going to start next month. We're going to start from the 1st of November until December, eh, eh, until the 1st of January. I'm going to be renting twice a month to be going to the studio to go and record and do the, the overnight that I am planning to do before the year starts so we can cover everything. I'm going to be around men alone. Papa Rukafila is okay with it. I could leave now, go somewhere, and I'll be there. In Nigeria, I meet my brother, who the devil wanted to come up against. He didn't have anywhere to sleep. I had one, I had a big room. I had one bed. I called Papa Rukafela. I said, Papa Rukafela, is it okay if I allow a man to come and sleep in the bed? Before I called Papa Rukafela, I told the man, it's okay, you can sleep with me in the same room. For a married woman, a lot of people say, married woman cannot share a room with a stranger. I'm a married woman who is an apostle of the Lord who carries the gospel of Jesus Christ. So a lot of things are not normal and they will never be normal. You think I will leave a brother to sleep out, lie, lie, lie. And when I called my partner, the God of Abraham, before I even called my, my after, I allowed a man to come in the room. We already eat. That's when I called Papa Rukafela. I said, there will be a man sleeping in the room. With me. Papa Rukafela said, yes, why would you live in there? And he could have told me, you are in Nigeria. You don't know that man. Something can happen to you. Lie, lie, lie. La. If you walk in with a black heart and you expect bad things to happen, they'll be happening to you. Some of us, we have been walking by faith our whole life. People think we have big mouth and we're too bored and we're not normal. We can't be normal because the God who created us is a spiritual, faithful, mighty, powerful God. You think everything about God is normal that he raises the dead back to life? No, can't be. So this one, equally yoked, go and ask where we are. And we have a question here online. Somebody asked a question. I don't know who asked. I saw the question. Let me answer it because I love to have communication with you people. And if you want, you can join the live, the people on TikTok. Somebody asked me about uh, who is my spiritual father. I do not have a spiritual father. And I'm going to explain this in a small spot. Not to be distracted, but to answer that question. I do not have a spiritual father. Because even Jesus Christ himself, when he walked on the earth, he said, my father, if Jesus, the son of the living God, did not call any man on earth father, and he still called God my father, and he's the son of the living God. Paul called, he called the Lord my father. He called Jesus my father, not another man. No matter what will happen in this life, I will never call a man on the earth my father, because even the son of the living God who was born from a virgin, he called the Lord God Almighty his father. 
So if he that is exalted amongst all men calls God his father, you think I have a spiritual father, a man? My spiritual father is the Holy Spirit. That's how I got this anointing, wisdom, knowledge in the word that comes out of my mouth without a book. It's because my spiritual father is the living God, the spirit of the living God himself, the Holy Spirit with the Holy Ghost. Not a man, never. There will never be a man on this earth. And that's why when people feel comfortable to call me their daughter, uh -uh, don't give yourself power over me that God has not given you. My spiritual father is the Holy Spirit. Not a man. Can't never. Because all the things that I know, a man cannot teach me. It's not possible. And the way that I am to understand and get what I need to be taught, a man cannot know. It is only by the Spirit of the living God. So that's, I just wanted to answer that. I hope I answered your question. That's my spiritual father. Spiritual father, man. Ha! <laughs> We all met each other here on earth. If the Lord did, Jesus did not acknowledge Mary, Mary in that time when they said your mother and your brothers are looking for you, he did not try to put partiality and no, I can't do that. I can't. Because the Lord, even my father, the only man in this world and in this life that God has given power to be called my father is the man that is biologically my father. That's the only one. And the Lord still does not recognize my father like an higher authority or power because my life is still in his hands. So my father can kiss me and hate me. But if I've not done anything wrong, my life is in the hands of God. So the only man who is called my father is my biological father, Langford Botta, who is still alive in Zambia. Who they drive me crazy sometimes, but by the way, on the grace of the Lord, I love him. What can I do? You understand what I mean? And that's it. Another man, it's not possible. But I see it here online. A lot of people like to call me my daughter, my daughter. I know what the devil tries to do. We don't play that game because the power of life and death is in the time. How can I be your daughter? You don't know me. Even if I'm young, like your daughter's age, spiritually, I can never be your daughter. You might be older than me. You might be more spiritual inclined than me. But I will never be your daughter. When you are a woman, 70, 80 years old, you are my sister. When you are a man, you are my brother. But you will never be my father and I will never be your daughter. It's not rude. It's the truth of God. We honor God and we respect men. So when I say, hi, auntie, hi, mommy, hi, uncle, it's in the, the respect of tradition and in the world. But on the spiritual level, don't even feel comfortable to be in my comments, right? Your daughter, where? And I lie, oh. And I wish to give birth to somebody like that, Jesus. Therefore, you're a liar. This one for heaven, not for hell. So you better realize. So for me, I respect you, all of you, as my brothers and sisters. And that's why I also i am not an apostle who is moving with a mantle every day. That, eh, 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 eh. Oh, why, why? Eh, mm -mm. Sorry, oh. Forgive me. I don't do that. And that's why when you see me fall down and you say, but apostle, you're not supposed to do this. I'm a human being like all of you. Indicted, indicted, indebted to God. Serving God. Now the only one I owe everything to. No other man. Not even an explanation to man. In fact, man may be offended by me. is okay. But let not the father be offended by me because I cannot.